combined government and corporate experience in data centers, cloud and digital infrastructure. On such a crucial global issue, in front of a global audience, so we have people from our country also, India, as well as global audience. When we talk about sustainability, as previous speakers have already told you, data centers come into picture. Every click, every scroll, every email you send, every movie you upload on YouTube or download, it is not happening inside your mobile phones. It is actually processing at the back end in data centers. So data centers are actually today the digital factories. So every byte we produce, they are stored as well as fetched from the data center at the back end. So my focus on this topic will be, because I'm from the data center background, my focus is on global perspective also, but more focused on the Indian perspective. So let me take you to some statistics uh, at the start of the conversation. So India has almost more than 262 large data centers already. That includes the certified ones, non-certified both. This capacity is about to quadruple by 2030. So if we consider today it's around 1.2 gigawatt, by 2030 it's going to be ranged from 4 gigawatt to 4.5 gigawatt. The market size of the data center in India is 10.3 10 billion uh, by 2027, which is going to achieve. And when we expect that green DCs would be able to reach the 18.78 billion dollars market by 2033. So India is rising as a global hub. This also positions India as the world's next major hub alongside with US and China. So when we talk about the data centers, they are helping us a lot in our daily activities, online filing, movies, entertainment, but they are creating significant environmental impact. And let us understand the global perspective. So data centers actually consume approximately one to two percent of global electricity, and that's a huge amount. And this could reach up to 3.8 3 to 8 percent by 2030 as per the predictive analytics. The IT sector itself is responsible for 2 to 3 percent of global carbon emissions and this is comparable to the aviation industry itself. Any typical data centers uses around 3 to 5 million gallons of water per day for cooling the systems. As data centers are guzzlers, they consume a lot of electricity, energy, and you require cooling to cool them off. Global e-waste reached about 53.6 million metric tons in 2024, and only 17.4 percentage has been properly recycled. So you can understand that if you do, do not pay attention to the sustainability measures in our data centers, what a havoc they will be creating on our weather conditions, our global environment, and resulting in a lot of issues to ourselves. So why sustainable data centers are critical from the Indian perspective? So when we talk about India, so energy consumption of Indian data centers is increasingly increasing at 4% annually. And it is about to reach 139 billion kilowatt hour as on mid-2023 20, calculation. The carbon footprint and electronic waste is also growing in sync, in tandem. India has generated over 1.6 million tons of e-waste in 2024, last year. And most of it has been inadequately managed. Only 
22% of the data center buildings in India are LEED certified. So LEED certification is a global certification for data centers. India is already committed for net zero by 2070. And the interim targets are reducing emission intensity by 50, 45% by 2030. Reaching no, 50 percent, reducing the 50% non-fossil fuel based power capacities. So all this pivots on building green data centers. Now I'll just discuss about some of the best practices to build sustainable data centers. So as we are all aware that data centers consume more electricity, or cooling, or computation. So the number one is the usage of energy efficiency and energy efficient hardware. So there are various techniques by which we can do this. Virtualization is one of the techniques. We, we pool number of physical machines and create virtual assets like PCs, storage or networks. So we are utilizing only the resources very optimally. Similarly, we use advanced cooling in data centers. Advanced, the conventional cooling in data centers is through uh, chilled waters, using refrigerants and other, other uh, factors. But when we talk about advanced cooling, so we have liquid cooling. We have direct-to-chip cooling. So these are some of the advancements because the capacity, the, the overall workload as with AI and other, other factors coming into picture. So the capacity is increasing, the energy consumption is increasing. So when we talk about like liquid cooling, we actually immerse the entire IT equipment inside a solution which cools it at the source itself. Then renewable integration. So uh, on-site solar, wind power, power purchase agreements, as well as captive green power sources. So these are actually very helpful in reducing the carbon emissions. One more factor is the circular economy. So the linear economy which normally we practiced is to take, make and dispose of. So in data centers also, there are a lot of, because technology is going on increasing, so you need to dispose of or decommission your existing hardware but that is also creating a lot of e-waste. So now the circular, in the circular economy, we are trying to recycle the same things. We are trying to improve and recycle the same hardware to utilize for higher capacities. So refurbishment is one of the ways in which we can do that. And last but not the least, of the best practices is to monitor the data center infra properly by the use of uh, intelligent building, building management systems or, or IoT devices and with the help of data analytics you can even predict uh, how much carbon emission a particular device is going to have to produce and how you can reduce it. So these are some of the best practices and solutions. When we talk about the monitoring, so basically in data centers, we talk about three different uh, monitoring aspects. One is power usage efficiency, other is water usage efficiency, and third is carbon usage efficiency. So as the name itself suggests, uh, it would be very clear that how much power we are using, how much water you are, we are using, and carbon we are using uh, against the entire uh, energy consumption of the uh, IT equipment. So I'll discuss in detail about the power usage effectiveness, uh, which is uh, more important. Now let us see some of the global benchmarks and learnings in this field. So Google has already AI-powered uh, cooling, and it has reduced the overall cooling of, data, of its data centers to 40%. Microsoft also underwent a project Natic for data centers, which is placing the data centers inside the oceans, so utilizing the uh, cool water inside and thus reducing the energy consumption. Third is like Equinix, it has already 95% uh, renewable energy adoption by 2023. 
so global trend is from linear to circular economy which is reuse refurbish recycle when we talk about india perspective so there are a lot of key indian players who are there due to the data localization and other factors also so every if the home grown dc providers are increasing so i am from anantraj cloud that we have also basically uh, invested in data centers given the present scenario so uh, anantraj cloud adani connects control s st stt gdc so these are some of the data centers which have actually uh, implemented sustainable practices and uh, when we talk about the sustainable practices they are renewable energy use energy efficient hardware water conservation method recycling of water and green certifications so there are a lot of certification standards uh, globally also in india also we are going for those certification and standards and it is in development e waste management so these this is the picture uh, of uh, the benchmarking now coming to the pue so pue basically is a sustainability matrix for metric for data centers so pue is a ratio of the total facility power whatever energy you are giving to the data center facility uh, divided by the energy delivered to the it group so if we talk about the ideal feature all the energy which we are providing to the data centers should be utilized in the it equipment if it is not then that is going waste somewhere or the other so ideally it should be one the ratio should be one but if we talk about the global perspective so ratio is 1.59 so this means that 60% of the energy is spent on the overheads like lighting and cooling and other features so let us discuss about some smart solutions to reduce the pue so this is one of the solution is virtualization as i already told you uh, virtualization of physical resources and creating small resources as per our requirement so that the entire resource is optimally utilized so instead of powering 10 machines we pool all the machines and create small virtual assets which we can utilize as per the requirement so how it is impacting that you were earlier uh, dealing with the pooling of 10 machines now you may be dealing with the pooling of only two machines if they are utilized at the fullest so this is something in which we actually reduce uh, the pue second is the containments so in data centers or server halls we build cold aisle containments and hot aisle containments in order to not mix both the cold air and hot air so cold air is required to cool the it infrastructure and the it infrastructure itself produces a lot of hot air after processing through its fans and that air is uh, carried outside and so if you create a separate hot air and you exhaust the air and again put the cool air so this recycling helps a lot to be energy efficient and cooling also to be optimized the liquid cooling and immersion cooling already i have discussed and ai driven energy optimization so today ai is helping us a lot in handling different issues requirements so rather than just cooling the entire data center at one particular temperature we utilize ai to predict how much of cooling is required and do precision cooling so if one a pac or precision air 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 conditioning is required to unit is required to be a uh, switched on only that would be switched on and not the others but in the conventional data centers we used to take five to cater the entire capacity and we used to switch on all these things so this is also one of them in free air cooling this is also very good good example that you utilize the external free air to uh, cool your data centers and renewable energy integration so we are uh, already uh, Uh, aware that solar energy wind energy uh, hydroelectric power so these may be utilized to for uh, at least to 50% extent if we utilize it so we will be able to reduce the carbon footprint substantially and use of modular and edge data centers so that is also uh, rather than building data center capacity more than the demand go by the demand one by one and build it so uh, given the time constraints i think we'll Uh, try to conclude it quickly. So there are 
types of clearing. So there are international bodies like Uptime Institute, like TIA. So they actually certify the data centers. So when they certify, sustainability is one of the major issues which they try to address. So in design phase itself, they make it clear that the data center should be sustainable. And accordingly, that, that is implemented and they give the certification based on that. So in India, almost we have PV around 1.6 to 1.8. And uh, when you use the sustainable measures or use the green data centers, so uh, there is a reduction of almost 30% of non-IT power usage. So I think I am um, finished with the time. I'll just quickly go on that use of energy efficient infrastructure is very important and this is also one of the ways to uh, go sustainable in which we use highly efficient UPS system, variable speed drive for HVAC, green building design, high density racks for efficient power distribution and also monitoring through smart building management system. So it's time that we screw up our energies and focus on the sustainability issues because these guzzlers are providing a lot of producing a lot of CO2 emissions and if they are not contained and as the requirement of the data centers is increasing day by day we are using Facebook everybody is like pumping up data, photographs, videos so maybe that this would land us in soon and from Indian perspective there is the data localization uh, aspect which has come due to the Indian uh, Personal Data Protection Act. So a lot of homegrown data center providers are coming up. So it's very good that we standardize the things and we incentivize the people who are in the data center industry and we could get the results very nicely and would, we could become a global uh, uh, example uh, just like other players. So we can be an ideal example that we have set the stage for green data centers as well as a sustainable world. Thank you so much.